Hey everybody, Ramy here. Today we're gonna to talk about how to import PowerPoint slides into Captivate. You know, how do these two work together? What are some of the things you can do? And I did some tests and I'm gonna talk about some of the things that work really well and some of the things that don't and give you some recommendations on how I see this being used. Okay, so up on my screen here, I already have a few PowerPoint presentations already uploaded just to make this really easy. But I'm gonna show you how to do it. We're gonna start from scratch, so let's go. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do when you open up Adobe Captivate, you can, you know, import and you create a few different kinds of presentations. Let's start off with their default PowerPoint one, which is project from MS PowerPoint. So we are going to create a new project from MS PowerPoint slides. You're going to find a PowerPoint presentation, you know, the one you should have already developed and have had up and available. All right, so once you press that, some options are going to pop up on the screen. Now, one simple trick I'm going to tell you. First of all, when you're going to open up your PowerPoint presentation, make sure that PowerPoint is actually opened up. Not that presentation per se, but PowerPoint is opened up. There are a few quirky things that Captivate does when it's importing, so you want PowerPoint to be open. For example, I got a few errors sometimes that certain features weren't working because PowerPoint just wasn't open. I also sometimes would get this weird system memory error that my memory, there wasn't enough memory to open up the PowerPoint presentation or the PowerPoint presentation was damaged. All those were solved by opening up PowerPoint. And trust me, my memory was not low. So you get, there's some little quirks and bugs. It happens with all Adobe products. I've dealt with this for like 20 years. So I'm not unfazed by it whatsoever. But just a tip, make sure PowerPoint is open when you're gonna do this. Okay, now let's take a look at the screen. All right, so you can see I'm pulling up a presentation. It's got my name, my height, you know, with obviously I need to know what my client needs or what kind of project I'm developing to know my height and width. All right, now I can pick slides. I can include one or many by checking or unchecking. By default, they're all checked. Then I've got some things on the bottom here, this on mouse clicker automatically. How do I want to advance slides? By default, what Captivate does, it basically creates an on click button for you on top of all your slides. So instead of you having to go through and manually do it, it just does it for you. Nice little feature. All right, then it has these two options at the bottom here. One is high fidelity. High fidelity is unchecked, so you can check it if you want to. But basically what that does is all those little, like, you know, if you created animations in PowerPoint, if you had, like, voiceovers, narration in your PowerPoint, it brings them into Captivate. Now, I make sure you test all those when you bring them over, but it's supposed to bring all of them into Captivate. We'll talk a little bit about some of my tests in a couple minutes. Um, next thing is linked. Link basically just links the presentation to the actual PowerPoint file, if you'd want to do that. I'm going to leave them both. I'm, not gonna, I'm actually going to click cancel because I've already imported this presentation because it can take a few minutes to, to import, especially if you've checked high fidelity. It can take a little bit to import them, so just be aware of that. All right, so I've got my presentation up here. This is just a standard presentation. It actually looks really good, right? I don't see any, like you know, it's basically like converting these, it converts them into an SWF file, but really it's like one, it functions like it's one big image. So if I were to shrink it or make it bigger, like it expands and contracts and makes things distorted, which I'll show you when I show the responsive mode. But at, this way, by default, actually looks really good. And you know, I can click through, I can see all of my slides here. And let's play it. Let me show you what it looks like. Because basically we've done it, right? Let's preview. Let's preview in the browser just to show you what it looks like. So you can see how it actually looks. Move this over here. We're gonna click play. Now, one thing I will tell you to keep in mind is make sure you pay attention to what buttons are here. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna worry. We're not, I'm not teaching you how to play with skins right now. So you go do that because you don't, won't probably need all the buttons. Um, but you can go through and click through and it basically, I now have a PowerPoint that's a Captivate file, okay. Cool. I mean, it, it's a PowerPoint Captivate file. There are some reasons why you'd want to do this with a client, especially like if they didn't know what they were doing. Okay, so you can see we've created this file and it works really well. I can publish it. Okay, so let's talk about some of the other things we can do. I can right click on this and actually edit this particular slide or the whole presentation with PowerPoint by right clicking on the slide edit with Microsoft PowerPoint. So you can see they allow me to do some things. I can see like on the right hand side here, I've got some options. Each one's an SWF file as I've already mentioned. Notice this little title that says click box. This is my action they've already created. You know, I created that in the beginning when I said import on, on, advanced slide on click. 
So they created a little click box for me, which is nice. So I didn't have to do that with each one. The cool thing is, you know, I could just import one slide if I needed to. I could import multiple slides. So what I've done is I tried to test a few different ways of doing this. For example, I tested doing this using the responsive method, because this is the other method I think people would commonly want, like especially if they want like their PowerPoint presentation on their phone or something like that. This could be one way you do that. Maybe there'd be different ways I'd really do that, but let's just assume you want to do it in Captivate. All right, so you can see the desktop view. Now, one thing to pay attention to that I already see. Look at this, look at the word video. Do you see that? It is pixelated, pixelated. Why is it pixelated? Because we've changed the size a bit. When I import it in the responsive, it changed the size. Let's take a look at what it looks like on the iPad. Ooh, even more crunched up. Look at those little text. No way, that does not look good. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No, no, no. Ooh. No, 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 no. So, you can see not does not do well with responsive does not do well would totally not recommend that but you can see my images like here these actually don't it's not great but it's not terrible this with real life does look kind of bad it's not it's not really that good um, but they're not terrible i can still see what they are um so you can see that there are some times when this doesn't work now when I let's go back to the beginning when I was showing you how to import your PowerPoint slide I said if you check this high fidelity box some features work um, like it's supposed to import your features from PowerPoint and they're supposed to work so let's talk about some of my tests what I found and what I didn't find because I'm now showing you how to import PowerPoint slides really simple to do I mean it takes one second let's talk about and I've shown you how to you know what it looks like in the responsive mode and you know you can import one slide or many let me talk about what works and what didn't work in my test and then let's talk about some of the reasons why you would like what are my recommendations for when you would really want to do this okay so when you check that high fidelity what comes over so in my tests I was able to get like a lot of effects from PowerPoint, like word art, shapes all worked, word art works, um, any animations I created, like things like flying in the screen, like a little circular word just flying in the land and, you know, maybe it really annoy the audience. But those types of things work. If I did like recorded narration in PowerPoint and imported that worked beautifully, uh, surprisingly worked really well um, in PowerPoint. I mean, in Captivate. Okay. But there was one big, big feature that did not work. And it's okay it doesn't work. I just need to know what works and doesn't work because I can create whatever doesn't and captivate. But what didn't work were buttons. So any kind of like a link I was creating, like if I created a button to go to the next slide in PowerPoint, totally did not work in Captivate. That meant like if I created like a game, like I do an activity with my students where I haven't created a Jeopardy game in PowerPoint totally would not work when I import it into Captivate. And I would love to have that happen, but you know, I'm communicating with two different pieces of software that are not the same company. You know, I think Captivate is doing a good job as it is, but yeah, that link did not work. So some, not all features work. So my advice to you, if you're trying to import, first of all, test every single feature you want to have work in PowerPoint and then import in the Captivate, please test them. Now, let's talk about my recommendation for using this because it gets, I'm leading right into it. First of all, my recommendation to you is if you are the one developing the PowerPoint, I guess I don't see why you just wouldn't use Captivate to begin with. But obviously, you know, sometimes a client's going to hand you something and it's going to be like, we need these thousand slides in Captivate or something like that. You know, that happens, right? We've all dealt with that kind of stuff. But what you're going to want to do is I really, really, really think that you're going to want to do a lot of the legwork in Captivate once you import the PowerPoint slides. I think PowerPoint is really nice for like importing the graphics and like maybe look and feel because you already have it done and it can really help save a lot of time but like any features you're gonna have to do them in captivate like i think even if you're recording sound like there i, I really would recommend 
recording, never recording sound in PowerPoint to begin with and using an external mic, external, external sound file, bring that into Captivate, make it done professionally, create a really good module. So, you know, there's some reasons why I totally wouldn't do it. But, you know, I understand why one would want to bring the PowerPoint slides. And I think it can really save a lot of time, especially if a client's done a really good job or has a good base course. You know, it's a good starting point for you to really put together a Captivate module. And to get, pow like, PowerPoint, you know, doesn't do good with an LMS. It's not easy, as easy to track and do things like that. Like, there are some workarounds, but I think this is a really good workaround which puts it right into that so that, you know, because Captivate can publish really well and communicate well with the LMS. So I think in that regard, doing things like that, I think there are definitely reasons to do this. But I would highly, highly recommend you just developing and Captivate from the start. I mean, that's the easy way to do it. But this video is about how do they, how do they work and does it work well? So those are my tips, you know. So let's rehash. When you're going to import PowerPoint into Captivate, open up PowerPoint and then import your slides because there were some, I ran into a few different bugs and I saw them mentioned in forums and other where, so it's not just me running into a few, a lot of, it seems like very common that Adobe is recommending open up PowerPoint, then import. Um, simple things like that. You know, figure out, definitely do tests if you're clicking that high fidelity and you want features to work. Just make sure everything is working and it's going to work. I think if you're doing responsive, if you really want this to be on a mobile device, I think there are going to be some issues, especially with like pixelation. You might just be better off saving that PowerPoint presentation as like a PDF and letting someone view it on their mobile device. Um, otherwise, it works really well and it's really easy. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.